While I've previously made tutorial videos on how to get started with backtesting using Python and Pandas, what has changed so significantly since I started making videos is the explosion of artificial intelligence and the real competency now of large language models. So I really needed to make a new video showing how you can use large language models to greatly simplify the coding process and really code a backtesting strategy even if you have very little coding experience. Today we're going to use ChatGPT, but you could use uh, Claude or any Frontier model. At the time of making this video, GPT-40 is the Frontier model from OpenAI and Claude 3.5 Sonnet is the leading model from Anthropic. If you want to follow along with me, we're going to use ChatGPT on one frame, and we're going to use a Google Colab notebook. So just point your browser to colab.research.google.com, and then start a new notebook. And I'll show you just how easy this is. So you try to give the language model as much detail as you can. Write a function using Python and Pandas. Pand Python is a programming language and Pandas is a data science library, which will return a Pandas data frame of historical stock price data. The function should accept a ticker symbol, which is a string, and a number of years of price data to download, which is an integer, and it should download daily candles. During the video, I may speed up some of this token generation. So this is finished creating a function. It, all, it even uses a, creates a doc string for us and example usage. All we have to do is paste this into Google Colab and we'll try it out. And just like that, we have five years of price data for Apple. So let's ask it to help with creating our technical indicators. Now write a Python function that will accept a pandas data frame containing stock price data as will be generated by the function you just wrote and applies the MACD moving average convergence divergence technical indicator to the data frame using default settings. Once again, we'll simply copy this code, enter it in. Technically, we do not need to import pandas again because we've already done that. And we'll test it out by saying df equals calculate macd or df. And let's look at df data frame. And now you can see that this has added the MACD and it has added the signal line, but it has not added the histogram. Histogram column as well. Please modify the function. All right. All right, perfect. So, what I want, and I'll show you why here in a second, is to also have the histogram line. Now, if we say this, now we have a histogram line, which the histogram line are these positive and negative deflections, and it's just a difference between the two MACD calculations. So let me show you now how using a language model can be incredibly powerful. Let's say that you come up with a strategy in your head, except the technical indicator that you want doesn't exist, and you're faced with having to code it yourself. I'm going to show you how this becomes incredibly easy using language models. So, for example, let's say that you are considering the MACD technical indicator. A common uh, strategy is to 
buy or enter a trade when the MACD, when there's an MACD crossover, for example, right here, and maybe you would enter a trade here. Well, <clears throat> maybe you say to yourself, gosh, by the time this histogram becomes positive, uh, much of the positive price action may have already happened. And wouldn't it be nice if you could enter the trade uh, sooner, while, while maybe while we were still in the red here, and it's fixing to oscillate back to green? Well, you might imagine that to know when to enter, when your MACD is in the red, you might want to know, since stocks oscillate back and forth between being positive and negative on the MACD, you might want to know for a particular stock how long, how many bars on average does this stock stay in the red or have a negative MACD histogram before it goes green. And if you knew that, it might be a good strategy to enter a trade when the current number of consecutive red bars, negative bars, was greater than the average number. That might mean it's more likely to be very soon going back to green. I'm not saying that this is the greatest strategy in the world. We're going to test it. But it's just a thought, and it is an indicator that you won't find in any pre-made library. So if you want to test this, you got to code it yourself. So let's just tell ChatGPT what we want. Okay, so I've done my best to try to explain what I want. The histogram column will oscillate between positive and negative values. I would like a function which can analyze the historical price data data frame over a specified window of rows. And maybe I want to say specified backwards looking window of rows and calculate the average duration in rows of consecutive negative values. Set the default window size to 100, but this should be a variable that the function accepts. And this is important. Please ask any clarifying questions you need before creating the function. Sometimes you're doing your best to give the language model all the information you think it needs, but there are ambiguities or there's uh, clarifying points that it needs. And by default, it typically won't ask you unless you kind of give it permission. Functions identify streaks of consecutive negative values. The histogram function calculate the alpha duration in rows of these streaks. So yes, would you like to include cases where there are no negative streaks or should the function return none or zero in, in such cases? Return none or in those cases and also return if there are not sufficient rows for a complete window of data. Wait a second, I made a typo here. Not sure that's gonna matter, but. I'm gonna send this again. Interesting, we seem to have run into some kind of error don't see any actual code. Please re-output the function as I don't see any code in your response. Okay. And this is how you deal with these errors that uh, come up. You simply just ask the language model to fix its mistake. So now it's created average negative streak duration. All right. Uh, yes, uh, I can already see that this is a problem. This function is returning a single float, and that's not what I want. The function should not return a single float value for each row in the data frame, it should calculate the average negative streak duration for the prior 100 rows, prior window of rows. 
Does that make sense? All right, so now it's going to take the data frame and return the data frame. Okay, so this, is, this will be what I want. So let's just replace that. It's called average negative streak duration. We're going to say df equals calculate average negative streak duration over df. All right. And this is this looks right. So in the beginning of the data frame, there aren't yet a hundred rows for it to make the calculation. And then down at the bottom, there are. Um, but it's changed all of the values here to NAN. And I'm not sure why that is. That's, of course, wrong. Now that it's done that, we're going to have to reload the historical price data, add the MACD again. Okay, good. So you just tell it what the error was and it will correct it. Now for the trading strategy that I've talked about, you're going to enter a trade when the current number of consecutive negatives in the histogram is greater than the average number. Well, we need to we need to know the current number of consecutive negatives. Okay, so now write a similar function, but the output will be the current number of consecutive negative values in the histogram column be Right. Again, we do not need to, can't remember if we've already imported NumPy. So we're going to say df equals calculate current negative streak, df, and OK. That'll always be an integer, so that looks correct. Histogram is negative in these rows, so this is increasing. And unfortunately, because I'm not paying for GPT-4.0, we have reached the limit, and we'll have to try again later. I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so now that we have all the basic tools and technical indicators we need to do a simulation, let's ask chat GPT to actually write a trading simulation. I say, well, now let's put it all together and create a Python program that I will run in a Google Colab notebook, which will be a trading simulation. Please have the Python program download the last five years of historical price data for Apple and simulate entering a long trade whenever the current number of consecutive MACD negative histogram rows is greater than the average number of oops, consecutive MACD histogram rows over the prior 100 row window. The trade should be exited when the stock price either gains 3% or loses 3%. The program should summarize the results and list the individual trades as well. Please ask any clarifying questions you need before writing the program. Okay, so it has some clarifying questions. Initial capital, should we assume any initial capital? Should we focus purely on percentage gains and losses? And I think I would like percentage gains and losses. 
expressed as percentages. Two, transaction costs. Do, I'm just going to make this simple. I just want to see if ChatGPT can do this. Do not consider slippage or commissions. And we will say assume It looks like it's even going to plot some, plot a graph of some results for us, which would be kind of cool. Interesting. Okay, we don't need the explanation right now. Let's try it out. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. It's plotting on the graph where the buys and sells were. Fortunately, it's not really zoomed in enough for us to be able to tell much information. Okay, so let's. Here's the summary. There were 55 total trades, an average plot profit or loss of trade of 0.66% per trade. 29 winning trades, 25 losing trades. Here's the individual trades. It did not tell us anything else. For example, total profit or loss. But this is amazing. Now, viewers of this channel know that I don't just ch test one stock. I also t I test basically large volumes of stocks. Let's see if it's so a final step. Let's see if it can handle that. Let's just leave it there and aggregate the results. I hope it doesn't try to output a hundred graphs. I love how it comments out the code as well. Okay, so it looks like it's finished. It's giving us an explanation now. Let's copy this over and try it. Okay, it's downloading the downloading the price data. I love that it gives us a progress bar. Okay, so it was able to handle this request. It simulated 4,400 trades, average profit loss per trade, 0.4%. Winning and losing trades, 53% po positive. It really didn't give us any other summarizing information. But this is fascinating. So this doesn't have to be the end of it. You can iterate, you can iterate on this as much as you want. You can add, ask, add features, add graphs. Um, this is just an incredibly powerful tool. So I wanted to show this to everybody. I encourage you to get out there, try this for yourself. If you try this out and you have some good results or you think of interesting ways to prompt ChatGPT to give you even better results, please uh, leave that in the, in the comments below so we can all benefit. Thanks for watching.